these math books never made it. They were never reprinted again. They were printed once, they were used for perhaps a few years, and then they fell out of favor. In this video, we're going to look at these books and try to figure out why these books were never reprinted. Let's start with the first book, which is really, really cool looking. It's called Elementary Functions, an Approach to Precalculus Mathematics by Heckenbach and Kegley. What a cool cover. This is a hard cover, and I believe this is the only printing. If you know otherwise for any of these books, please leave a comment because I'd be really, really curious. I was only able to find these versions on the internet and nothing newer out there. Elementary Functions, an Approach to Precalculus Mathematics by Heckenbach and Kegley, Iowa State University, under the editorship of Carl B. Allendorfer. Copyright 1970, and I don't believe it was printed again. I think this is actually the only printing, which is really, really weird, because this book is actually pretty good. Here it talks a little bit about the book. The purpose of this book is to prepare the student for studying calculus. Such a preparation involves two things, subject matter and attitude. That's right. So your attitude, I think, is super, super key when it comes to studying math, and this book agrees. Here's a look at the contents. It starts with the real number system, plane coordinate systems, and functions. So really basic mathematics. Polynomial and rational functions, circular functions, invertible functions, exponential and logarithmic functions, basic algebra and an appendix, and then we have some math induction and a little bit of trigonometry. And you do get answers to some of the exercises in this book, which actually make this book a pretty good choice for self-study. Here's a good look at the answers, and you can see that the authors do provide answers to quite a few of the exercises. So you can work through this book and check your work and use it as a source of knowledge to actually learn mathematics. I think it's so cool you can pick up a book like this from 1970 and use it to learn math which is still used today. Here's a quick look at some mathematics in this book. Let f of x equal 3x plus 5, then f is 1 to 1 because, so they assume f of x1 is equal to f of x2, then they show that x1 is equal to x2. Therefore, the function is 1 to 1. And you get one example, two examples, three examples, and look at this, there's actually a fourth example. So you get four examples of showing functions are 1 to 1, and then you have the exercises. So the book does not waste any time. It gets straight to the point. Here's the definition, here's the examples, here's the exercises, which make this a great book, I think, for learning mathematics. So why was this book never reprinted? The answer is, I don't really know. This book was printed in 1970. It's got a really cool cover. It has really good explanations and good exercises, and it has answers to a lot of the problems. But for some reason, this book was only printed once. In order to understand this next book, in theory, you're supposed to understand this book first. So this is set up in like a chronological order here. So this book is a book that was only printed once. It's called A Programmed Course in Calculus, Transcendental Functions. And I don't think it's possible to find this book. I was not able to find it on the internet prior to making this video. This book was written by several people, not just one author. A Program Course in Calculus, Part 3, Transcendental Functions. And here you can see it's prepared by the Committee on Educational Media of the Mathematical Association of America. And here are the writers. Look at all of the people that contributed to writing this little textbook. But unfortunately, it was never printed again after being printed once. Copyright 1968, the Mathematical Association of America, Inc. A programmed course in calculus, and this is the third one. There's different books in this series. This is the only one I currently own. The eight chapters of this program text are designed for a solid but normal first year calculus course in college. Solid but normal, interesting. This book is very different from other books and here it explains how to use the book. It says that information is presented to you in a relatively small numbered segments called frames. In most frames, you are asked to make an immediate response to a question, testing your understanding of the information in the frame. You can immediately compare your answer with correct answer provided in an answer block below the frame. Let me show you what they're talking about. It's actually really different. First, here's a quick look at the contents. So this one only covers chapter E, which is transcendental functions. There are other chapters, but they're found in other books, 
which unfortunately I don't have. Here's a look at some of the contents in the other books. So they give you all of the contents for the other books as well, which is kind of nice in case you want to look for those other books. You can see what kind of information they contain. And it's just basic calculus. This is meant to supplement a calculus course. Let me show you the inside of the book because you're gonna be really surprised at how different this book is. So why was this book never reprinted? And I think the answer is it's a very non-standard book. This is not a book that you could say, hey, I'm teaching a calculus class. Let's have everyone in the class buy this book and learn from this book. It doesn't really work that way. This is more of a supplement. Also, if you were to use this book to learn calculus, you would need to buy all of the books in order to get all of the information from calculus. So they're kind of meant to work as supplements, I think, to regular college classes. And maybe that's why it was never reprinted. And this last book is far more advanced than these three. Let's take a look at this one. This one is called Essentials of Abstract Algebra by Bundrick and Leeson. And again, I could not find another edition of this book on the internet. If you find another one and find out that I'm wrong and this book has been reprinted, please leave a comment below. Essentials of Abstract Algebra, Charles M. Bundrick, University of West Florida, John J. Leeson, University of North Florida. Here's the copyright 1972 by Wadsworth Publishing Company, Inc., Belmont, California. And I believe that this is the only edition out there. It was never reprinted, which I think is really strange because this is a pretty good book. This is meant to be a gentle introduction to abstract algebra. Essentials of Abstract Algebra is designed for a first course in abstract algebra. The text was developed from material presented by the authors to sophomore and junior level mathematics majors, some of whom were preparing for careers as high school teachers. So this is meant to be an introductory book. And really the only prerequisite for this book is that you have some basic knowledge of proof writing. It does start with basic proof writing, the language of mathematics. But in my opinion, it's better to have more than this before jumping into this book. Still, if you can find this book for not a very expensive price, I definitely think it's worth getting, especially considering that I'm pretty sure it was never reprinted. Basic Concepts in the Development of Algebraic Systems, Groups. So it doesn't start groups until page 51. That's how you know it's a book for beginners. More on groups than rings. That's kind of fun. You get to see rings a little bit early. And then Integral Domains and Fields. A very, very concise book. Look at the page numbers. It's not very thick. And you do get answers to some of the exercises in this book, which make it a valuable resource for learning abstract algebra. Here you can see the phenomenal detail that the authors go into when presenting the solutions in the back of the book. Look at this, this is beautiful. This is more than you get in most abstract algebra books. Most abstract algebra books don't have answers like this. They might have some partial answers, but it's just gonna be numerical ones. This actually has like little proof references Suppose that A inverse exists, then A is an I, A inverse is an R, and they, they go through and they, they show the proof, which is really, really beautiful and really priceless when you're trying to learn abstract algebra. This is an awesome book simply for the fact that it has those answers. So even if you're learning abstract algebra with another book, if you can get this one, the fact you have these answers makes it super, super, super useful. So if you're watching this video and you don't know what a group is, let me just tell you, a group is basically a set with an operation, which in this book they call star. And that set has certain properties. Star has to be associative. There has to be an identity element in your set. And every element in your set has to have an inverse. As a concrete example, the non-zero real numbers under multiplication would form a group. The identity element is one, multiplication is associative, and for any non-zero value of x, its inverse is one over x. And there's other examples of groups. Groups themselves are an example of what's called an algebraic structure. Other algebraic structures are rings and fields, and those are also discussed in this book. And abstract algebra is the study of those algebraic structures. So it's a really beautiful subject. You just need some proof writing to get into. And this book is surprisingly good, and I'm really shocked that it wasn't reprinted. So for whatever reason, this book is no longer you know, being made. You can still find this book and you can still find all of these books 
and I will leave, well, not this one, but you can find most of these books. Maybe you can find this one, and I will leave links in the description to whatever I can find. I'll look again, but the first time I looked, I could not find this book. It's really, really rare. These I was able to find, and at this very moment in time, they were quite inexpensive. So again, I will leave links in case you want to check them out, and you can pick them up for just a few dollars. So that's it. I just wanted to show you three books that never made it. These books were never reprinted. I think they're all great books, and I really don't understand why they didn't make them again. They all have their pros, and they're not perfect books, but they're solid math books. Yep, until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Good luck, and take care.